YTPC. Padre coming to you via the virtual airwaves of YouTube to say hello, YouTube pipe community, and happy pipe week. What a blessing it is to have this thing we call Pipe Week. Started out Sunday, which was Father's Day. I made a little video on Fridays. We're waiting for a storm to come through here and uh, where I live down in NOLA on the, near the Gulf Coast, the Big Easy. And uh, wish everybody Happy Father's Day then. If I missed you, well, uh, on the late side of things, happy Father's Day and happy Pipe Week. Little uh, house cleaning, uh, taking to the uh, backside of the church property today to, to just do a little quick video, enjoying some, uh, as my good friend Ghost Cobb would call it, some mud, some black coffee in the Country Square Tobacconist mug. Also enjoying this wonderful little Stanwell billiard. Stanwell makes a great pipe. They really do. Very nice pipes. Very good prices. And enjoying in it today. Some Orlick Golden Sliced. This is a tin that goes back to purchased in 2015 opened and jarred in 2016 and um, let me tell you just this is just my opinion you do with it as you like about Arley Golden Slice it's a Virginia sip it it will give you flavor but you can't push it you gotta sip it that's hint number one hint number two age is its friend age will be your friend um, so this this batch that I'm enjoying again it's it's I purchased it I let it sit in that tin for about a year I think that that's a, a prudent move with this blend just just let it sit there don't eat, don't crack it just let it do its thing for for at least a year or so a year should be plenty and then tin it put it when I, I'm, I'm saying tin it jar it put it in a mason jar um, now let me tell you what I did with this batch quite by accident, but I really, really think it added something to it. Now it could also be that it was a significant amount of years on it before I did this. Because remember, this is from 2015, opened in 2016, and placed in the jar. I don't remember exactly when I did this. I think it was around 2018 or so. I was traveling with it and I forgot it in the car in the mason jar totally sealed in the summer <laughs> and it sat in that hot car i don't remember exactly how long but it was weeks it might have even been months it was probably at least four weeks could have been six or eight weeks it sat in that heat and i think it had its own little stoving process about it now you may say that's just the craziest thing ever i'm saying that's good for Virginia's, especially this Orly Golden Slice. What you're gonna find with the Orly Golden Slice is it mellows over time and the flavor profile blossoms over time. That, uh, that citrusy note becomes easier to find. There's some uh, other beautiful qualities about this Virginia that just blossom, including this sort of uh, bready note that can come up uh, from it. Uh, at the very least, time is the friend. Whether you want to try that little trick of jarring it and throw it in the back seat over the summer for a couple months, your mileage may vary. But such a nice, nice blend. And a wonderful blend uh, to contemplate Pipe Week. I know I said it, say it again, happy Pipe Week to all of you. You know what's exciting about Pipe Week is that on Saturday the 26th over on Flat Cat Piper's channel, he's going to be hosting the Pipe Week Awards Ceremony. I don't even know if I know exactly what that is. 
but I think you're going to want to watch out for it. And I don't know the exact times. What I would re recommend you do is go over to briarreport.com, briarreport.org. Look around there, probably on the .org side. Or check out the Briar Report newsletter, which you can get in your email box by signing up on that website. It comes uh, these days on Tuesday mornings. Uh, with all the local listings of who's doing what shows and you can find out exactly what time there is a, a an award show which I think might be at six o'clock Eastern don't quote me on that an hour before that is the red carpet show which would be five o'clock Eastern I may be off by an hour or so these time zone things really confuse me but I know Phil at Briar Report can fill you in on that if you check out the website briarreport.com briarreport.org the Briar Report e-newsletter. Flat Cap might have something up on his channel about the, the times as well. It's going to be fun uh, to, to see what the uh, categories are and, um, and who wins what in the, um, the YTPC awards. Oh, I don't know if they're called the, the Pipe Week awards. Uh, it should be a blast. Also, if you have not seen or heard this, this is really incredible news. Phil, our friend Phil from the Briar Report is in a video, a real live video, and uh, Briar Blues, our good buddy Mike, was blessed to be able to land Phil for an interview which aired on Father's Day, and in there they talk about Pipe Week, and they talk about the award show and such, so I don't know how Briar Blues got Briar Report to come on to the YouTube because man I have tried for centuries and the guy turns me down left and right but that's okay I'm glad Briar Blues got him on the show uh, it was good to, to actually hear Phil's voice now Phil always rejected me when I invited him on. He said, Padre, I sound like Mickey Mouse and you can't have me on your channel. Nonsense. Phil sounds just like what you would expect Phil to sound like. A guy from New York who's just an incredibly nice fella that you'd love to sit down and have a pipe with. But check out Briar Blue's channel and you'll find uh, that, that Father's Day, Sunday, June 20th, 2021 video with special guest Phil from the Briar Report on it. It, it was a, a lot of fun. Hey, speaking of a lot of fun, I've been having fun and I could kick myself for doing this uh, sort of in the wrong way. Uh, I know there's some people who want to kick me for doing it, period. But I did that silly little challenge. I, I threw out there those six questions for the sixth month and um, it has just, it has gotten, I guess what that's what they mean by viral. It went viral bigger than uh, more participants than I could have ever imagined and I've had a blast just uh, watching all the responses and where I could kick myself is I wish I would have hashtagged it come up with something six month questions uh, six for six challenge something where I could go through and find it because I'm just kind of like ciphering through hoping to find all the video responses so I can watch them let me let me put it this way if you're watching this video and you've made a video response to the six questions for the sixth month and i have not commented that's because i haven't seen it yet so you need to help me i don't mind if you put a link to your video down in the cellar of this video or just say hey go over my channel i've posted it because sometimes if you put links youtube gets weird and won't allow it to show and all that stuff whatever let me know get in contact with me i want to watch your response and uh, the way i'm keeping track so i know i've watched people is I, I leave a response back they've had some really good ones i saw one just today that taught me something i didn't know about this is a relatively new presenter on youtube it goes by the channel name watch my pipe watch my pipe go ahead and give him a sub you're going to enjoy his content one of the questions uh, that's asked, number four actually, name four people dead or alive that you would love to sit down with a pipe over. And he said, Ronald Reagan. And, you know, and it struck me as odd. He, there's some rain coming down. I don't know how loud it's getting uh, on the microphone here. But 
what struck me as odd was in my mind, President Ford, Gerald Ford was our last pipe smoking president, but Ronald Reagan was indeed a piper. And in fact, if you type him in Google Images, Ronald Reagan pipe smoking, you're going to see pictures come up. Now they're younger pictures. So my full uh, suspicion is that by the time he got to the White House, he was no longer uh, a, a member of the pipe community. Uh, but he did it. He, there are those pictures out there of a young Ronald Reagan looking sharp. The old Gipper with a pipe in his mouth. And I learned that from watching uh, the video response that Watch My Pipe put up today. So just one of the, I mean, there's been so many folks who have done some, some great, great video responses. That, you know who hasn't made a six question for the six month response video? And I'm a little disappointed in him. My buddy, Mark VV. I don't know what I'm going to do with that boy. Except publicly shame him. Like I'm doing right now. And I'm just giving him a hard time. You know, it's tough to be a guy like Mark VV. To have been a very successful banker and before the age of 40 be retired. I mean, it's a rough life to be Mark VV. We can't expect him to be making videos. I mean, he's got people to see places to go. He just doesn't come over and see Padre anymore. Yeah, I'm giving him crud. Because <laughs> he knows I love him. It's okay. It's okay. We made it through so-called Claudette down here in New Orleans. If you saw my Friday video, I was outside like I am today. The weather's worse today than it was Friday when I made the video. And we had this tropical glob of stuff. It was just kind of bearing down on us. And uh, I'm gonna rant for just a moment, do a little venting about weather. In that, what was odd about this is Claudette had the, um, before it even came to us, when it was out over the Gulf, the center of the storm was over the Gulf, it had the wind speed to qualify it for tropical storm status, but they did not give it any sort of tropical storm status. So it, it maintained what they called potential cyclone number three. Now, what's that, and that's fine. And the reasoning is, from my understanding, I'm, look, I'm not a meteorologist and I don't play one on YouTube. But from what I can understand, the reasoning was it did not have that closed circulation. So it didn't have a true cyclonic build about it, even though it had the wind speed to meet the minimum criteria. And so they didn't give it the designation out in the Gulf, but by calling it potential tropical cyclone number three, it allows for then all the, the stuff to kick in. They can make the warnings and uh, they can put up, you know, the uh, further to the coast, s further south of uh, where I am here, coastal flooding is a big deal. So you can start getting those warnings out to people and they can begin their preparations for the storms. I mean, we're used to it. We get those down here. Um, so I understand the, the, the rationale of wanting to get the warnings out and everything. But it was like four o'clock in the morning of Saturday. I mean, I'd already gone to bed and this thing had made, its center was, was on land. They had not named it. And then they decided to give it a name. Now, here's the, the rant that's gonna come out of me. Here's the cynic in me, right? Insurance companies, they have the opportunity to create policies for storm coverage and when a storm is named, the ball game changes. The deductible for homeowners goes up significantly. Now, I'm reaching in my pocket because this was buzzing, as you can see, uh, if you can see it or not. It basically says, National Weather Service, a flash flood warning is in effect for this area until 6 45 this is a dangerous and life-threatening situation uh, do not attempt to travel unless you are fleeing an area subject to flooding or under an evacuation order so sometimes i think maybe 
even though I'm recording this at 4.30 in the afternoon, I think they have little plants. Maybe it's in that window unit air conditioning or over in that light right there or in my head where they're listening to me. No, I really don't think that. But I do think that politics often informs science in the age in which we live in. So when you have a scientific agenda that has to be pushed because you're dependent upon the government giving you grant money to study certain things like say climate change as it relates to tropical activity and tropical storms and cyclones and hurricanes you got to have those storms in order to make the case for having the grant money to do the studies so why else would you name a storm four o'clock in the morning after it's made landfall and it's still no different it still doesn't have a closed eye so to speak around the center why else would you do that unless you want your numbers up well one possibility is because insurance companies are regulated by politicians and laws and if there's any damage that occurs from the storm the homeowner's deductible goes up drastically when it's a named storm that's two good reasons right there you can call me a cynic if you want but boy I think there's something to be studied about that now I don't remember if it was last summer or the summer before last I did a rant about the naming of tropical storms and how many of them that season had been named I think it was two summers ago how many of them that season had been named and lasted less than 24 hours many of those weren't even had no potential to impact land. They were what we call fish storms. Now, the numbers were inflated that summer as they were last summer for the number of named storms. Is that different than 30 years ago? I would suggest no, it's not. The difference is 30 years ago, we didn't have visible satellite imagery to see all these storms that would develop and then fizzle out within a day or so. Um, the only way we would know about them is some ship at sea would call home and say, Hey, I'm out in the Atlantic. Man, there's something bad out here, right? Anyway, that's a weather rant. I'll save that for another day. Suffice to say, we made it through Claudette where I am, and I know she veered off and headed up to some other places. And right now we're under a flash flood warning. It has nothing to do with any kind of tropical activity. It's just what it's like to live down south near the Gulf Coast in the summer. This is the kind of weather conditions we get, even in Pipe Week. And that Orly Golden Slice is nice in this stand around. Very nice. All right, friends. I think I've ranted long enough. Happy Pipe Week. Check out briarreport.com to find out about the Pipe Week Awards show coming up on Saturday the 26th. Hosted by Flat Cap Piper and Lady Fire. It's loud. A lot of that rain coming down on this little arcade I'm sitting underneath. And I hope you can hear me. It's getting, it's getting pretty loud out here. So, um, I probably should go inside and listen to the National Weather Service when they say, seek shelter now. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and go finish my cup of coffee and my bowl of Orlick, Orlick Golden Slice. I'm going to stay safe. And until we're together again on the virtual airwaves of the YTPC, this is Padre wishing you and yours God's peace, grace, and blessings. recording and was picking up and just wanted to kind of see where I was as it got rough all of a sudden glad I'm done
That's, uh, that's a lot of rain coming down. It's a little behind the scenes. I'm making Padre type of video right under a flash flood.